thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I wanted to speak about what I was reading in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. It's a topic, it's a teaching in the Word of God. Many of us don't like to hear. Not much of it is preached today. It is on the topic of hell. It's often been said that in three years of his public ministry, our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ spoke more about hell than he did of heaven. And in Matthew chapter 25, verses 41 and 46, we read of a place called hell in the context of doing good works, where, God, where Jesus at the end of time is going to separate the sheeps from the goats by the good works that they did. And let me first and foremost say we're not saved by our good works, but the good works that we do that show that we're saved is to glorify God through Jesus Christ and not ourselves. But to get back to what the Bible speaks about with hell, there are so many scripture verses, Matthew chapter 13, verse 50, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9, the book of Jude, one chapter, verse 7, it speaks of hell. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, speaks of the second death at the end of time, which is hell and all the people that will be there. It's all listed there. The nations that forget God, we're told in Psalm 9, verse 17, goes to hell. And slowly but surely here in America, as a citizen of America, I see my nation slipping into this prophecy as it has forgotten God. The Apostle Paul told us in Acts chapter 20, verse 27, that he brought the whole counsel of God's word to the people of his day. Many times you see preachers today on TV, pastors, uh, even in the pulpits, where everything today is feel good. Um, God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be healthy. The social justice gospel, God wants us free from all these different kinds of oppression here in this world. And in the context of what they're saying, by and large, some of it is true. But first and foremost, the gospel is first and foremost, salvation from our sins to Jesus Christ alone. Why must we be saved? And what are we saved from? We're saved from hell. Hell is separation from God. People think this earth is hell. This is not hell. This is earth. We have common grace blessings here on earth. We have health. We have cars. We have homes. We have enjoyments, hobbies, vacations. We make money. We have common grace blessings here on earth. Hell is when all these blessings of God are taken from us and we're separated from God forever in torment. A lot of religions, and I'm not going to point them out, but a lot of religions teach that there is no hell. Or they teach that you can be prayed out of hell or a place like hell. Hell is a place where you do not get out of. Once you're there, you're there. The best description I could tell of hell is the parable that Jesus gave of the rich man and Lazarus in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. My friends, if you think you're going through suffering now here on earth, it is nothing compared, nothing compared to what's going to be in hell. Think about burning in a lake of fire where there's no end of suffering. Here on earth, there's end to suffering. Recently, many of you know, I lost my mom to cancer. She had cancer in so many different parts of her body. The last three years of her life, she suffered so much. But for all of us who lost loved ones and we've seen them suffer, we know that the suffering they went through is temporary. It'll eventually come to an end. But when it comes to hell, my friends, the pain and suffering that goes on there is forever. The reason why is because God created us with an eternal soul. We're created in his image. God is eternal. And so when God decided to create man in the Garden of Eden, he created him body, soul, and spirit. Because of sin, we are told that we're going to die. Eventually, we all do die. We're told in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death. Physical death comes to each and every one of us. My children, they're very young. They're 21 and 18 years old, my daughters. And I have these talks with them. 
eventually they're going to die. The little baby seen born in a hospital, unless Jesus Christ comes back to rapture his church, we're all going to die. It's the sad reality of what has happened to mankind because of sin. But that is why God sent his son. The most, probably the most famous verse in the whole Bible, John chapter 3, verse 16, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And the next verse, verse 17, says that God sent his son not to condemn us, but to save us. My friends, today, let us look to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us look to him and thank him for the price that was paid at Calvary to set us out of the gates of hell, to spare us from going there because of our sins. And let us not be ashamed to speak the whole counsel of God's word. As I said before, in Acts chapter 20, verse 27, the apostle Paul spoke about the whole counsel of God's word. He wasn't too popular but he told the truth. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ spoke about, as I said before, in the context of his three years of public ministry, he spoke more about hell, more about sin, than he did about heaven. And he wasn't too popular here on earth. But let us remember our reward is in heaven. Philippians chapter three, verse 20 tells us that our citizenship is in heaven. Yes, we have, I like to call what we, I like to call what is said a dual citizenship. We have a citizenship physically here on earth. I'm, in a, I'm a citizen of America, worldly speaking, but eternally speaking, forever speaking, my citizenship is in heaven where I look to be seated with Christ forever with him, the lover of my soul. So I hope today's devotional video, my brothers and sisters, will, I know it's not a popular saying, uh, uh, doctrine, uh, preaching uh, about hell, but it is part of what the Bible speaks about. We need to bring the whole counsel of God's word. When we look at the torments of hell, especially as I said in the parable that Jesus gave of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31, thank God that we're spared this. And when we are thankful to God for what we've been spared, what's coming, we'll live for him more this day. This day is our daily bread. God bless you all this day. Stay strong in the Lord.